I should have known. I should have known that the shortness of breath, the intense heart palpitations, when I would go from seated to standing, I'd be lightheaded. Um, I would get winded so quickly. I should have known that those were the symptoms of heart disease, early warning signs. You know, I'm supposed to be the smart girl in the room. Everybody uh, has always said, you know, Star's the smart one. Well, guess what? I, like most Americans, did not recognize the signs of heart disease. And when I got my diagnosis, I was really floored. I really never thought that heart disease was something, you know, a black girl got. I was in my 40s and I had battled obesity and won. I lost 160 pounds and had kept a significant portion of it off. I was exercising regularly. I was exercising portion control. I was walking instead of riding. You know, I never met a driver I didn't like. So I was a little ticked, to be honest with you. I looked at my doctor and I said, what are you talking about? I have heart disease. That's an old white guy's disease. Actually, it's not. Uh, heart disease is the number one killer of all women the number one killer of African Americans. In fact, heart disease is the number one killer of Americans. And when it comes to women and African Americans, it beats the next four causes of death combined. Those are numbers that we can greatly change with just awareness. We've been talking about heart disease for so many years and the Go Red campaign for 10 years has been in everyone's face, women get healthy. Women focus on your heart health. And I'm really glad to be a part of this organization to focus attention where it needs to be. Heart health has to become a front burner issue. This pandemic is devastating to women across America. And I became the face of heart disease. There were a myriad of things that were happening to my heart. I had a malfunctioning aortic valve. I had a subaortic membrane. I had uh, fluid in my pericardium. So I required a pericardial window. Uh, if we didn't move quickly to repair my aorta, I was looking at a possible valve replacement and even a heart transplant down the line if we didn't move quickly. Um, those are scary words. And when they said I needed to have open heart surgery to repair it, I don't know if I wrapped my mind around open heart surgery. I, I remember asking, do you mean the kind where they crack your chest? You know, I'd read all of these new reports as a journalist that, you know, they can go through your armpit and do all kinds of things now and laparoscopic, and I'm sure that's the kind of surgery you're talking about. And uh, Dr. Fuster said, no, we mean the real kind of open heart surgery, old fashioned, where they use a saw and they spread your chest and they take your heart out of your body and they fix it. And he then looked at me with all confidence that only Valentin Fuster can have and say, and we will fix it. When you have one of the greatest cardiologists in the world sit across from you and give you that diagnosis, but with complete confidence, gives you a prognosis that you will be a heart disease survivor, you make good, good choices. You make really good choices. Now I did, admittedly, say, well, should I get a second opinion? And then it sort of hit me. He probably trained the darn person I'd get a second opinion from. So needless to say, I uh, took Dr. Fuster's advice and seven days before my 48th birthday, I had open heart surgery. Uh, my heart was out of my body for 22 minutes. And miraculously, I had no complications whatsoever, no infections, no glitches, no anything. I know for the first couple of days, um, I was in intensive care and I, uh, I laugh now thinking about it. 
I don't remember any of it. I don't remember the pain. I don't remember uh, the IVs. I remember none of it. And I think maybe that's God's way of allowing you to put the trauma of it behind you. The first thing I remember is on day three, screaming at the top of my lungs that I wanted a bacon cheeseburger. And needless to say, the nurses were like out of their minds and they said, uh, Ms. Jones, you can't have a bacon cheeseburger. They wanted to say, stupid girl, three days after open heart surgery, but they were so kind. And I called my boyfriend and said, I want a bacon cheeseburger. He, of course, thought I had lost my mind, that I was delusional. And so he thought he would be telling on me by calling Dr. Fooster. But what he didn't know is Dr. Fooster really did know me in ways that I'm not sure that I can explain. And Dr. Fooster gave Herb an instruction. He said, go get her a bacon cheeseburger. Herb really thought he'd lost his mind. So he went to get the bacon cheeseburger, he brought it to me. I literally took one bite and slept for eight hours. And Dr. Fooster said she needed to get control back. Uh, we had taken her heart out of her body. And she wanted everybody to know Star was back. And I really was. I made up my mind right then that I had survived for a reason. Um, I don't have the stomach to be a doctor. My math skills are not good enough to be a scientist. But I have the gift of a voice. I know how to use my mind to understand facts and make theories user-friendly. And I've been given a unique platform in the media and the public eye. So I take every bit of the gifts that I've been given and I said, God, you gave me the gift of life and I'm going to give it back to others. I called the American Heart Association and I said, uh, I just had open heart surgery and I'd like to volunteer. I think to this day they're still shocked. I don't think people in my position usually call them volunteer. Um, but guess what? More people should. And I figured with my platform and my big mouth, I'd be able to make heart disease and heart health a front burner issue, which is where it belongs.